canvas, as we've discussed before, is the foundation of the garment. When we take a cut out of the, uh, the canvas, we want that to match with the cut taken from the fore part of the coat. I would advise to take out the thread marks. So if you sew them in, that they can be very difficult to get out. Important when you're doing your darts not to get them twisted. So just fold the cloth on the center of the dart all the way through. Let's get all of it. Whenever I was training at Henry Pools, my master Paul taught me an order of assembly. We wanted to sit down in a machine, sew everything at once, get up, and then press everything at once. Whenever I machine my darts, I take the opportunity to machine the centre back seam and my sleeve seams as well. Alright, so we've machined up our seams, our straight seams and darts, so now we have to press them. We take her back first. One of the first jobs I had as an apprentice in Ireland was uh, the shaping of the back. Mix some water, apply it to the shoulder blade region. Now we're stretching the cloth for the blades. It is important to get good shape back here. We have to remember that we're dealing with three-dimensional form. Not everything can be cut into the pattern. We're shaping it in two parts, from the center back seam into the blade region, and then we come from the side seam over into the center of the back again. This time, we're, st we're shrinking it under the back of the arm. This will allow the coat to sit closer and cleaner under the back of the arm and throw in the fullness out of the blade region where we need it. Come down to the centre back waist and on the inlay. Get down inside, add a little bit of water. Take the corner of your iron and start to work it round to stretch the inlay. That stops it getting tight when the seam is pressed open. So that's it there. Whenever we come to open up the centre back seam, you can now clearly see the shape that's been created over a blade region. We have, must be careful when we open up this seam not to stretch the seam itself. You should always lift the iron slightly on the, on the seam like this so not to stretch the cloth. Also never pull the cloth and just let it allow it to lie flat. So we've got the four parts now with the uh, darts machined in. Let's open our darts. And now open the dart out. And you want to press it flat all the way to the tip. Difficulty with the dart when it's sewn is at the top it's throwing the fullness into the chest region where we need it. But it also creates shape at the bottom thrown into the hip region. It is important at this point to shrink away that excess fullness. The method of doing this is called blocking out the pocket. Look at the pockets here. We're blocking it over the hip so we sort of leave, we don't want to push all this fullness this way or this way. We just want to leave it in the area that it is. Just put the iron on and shrink out the excess. This cloth that we're dealing with is wool flannel. Although it is lightweight, it is a, it's a dense cloth that will shrink and stretch and work with the tailor. When you hear tailors talk about cloths that tailor well, this is what we're talking about. If I were dealing with a Super 150 perhaps, or even a cotton, I would be unable to do this. I would have to introduce a side body. You do not shrink the waist here. Once the pockets are blocked out, we place a linen stay behind it to create stability for the pocket to be sewn onto. We know that this pocket is going to come under stress from the hand constantly being pushed in and out of it. So having a something to sew on behind the cloth 
we really have the strength in the top of our pocket. Most ready to wear and you made to measure will use fusing for this. I prefer to use the traditional linen stays because it will last much longer than any fusing that you could possibly think of sticking back there.